Scientists with China's National Space Administration watched the final moments before touchdown. The probe landed accurately and steadily, hitting the bullseye, he says. Its target the largest, deepest and oldest crater, and it's on the side of the moon that never faces Earth. Because of that, scientists can't communicate directly with the probe. In May, they launched a satellite to relay messages and transmit images. This is a fairly new uh, installation for us here at the observatory. And it's those uh, pictures Edward Bloomer is so excited about. He's an astronomer with Britain's Royal Observatory. For lots of members of the public, it's going to be really interesting in terms of, I mean, fundamentally getting cool pictures back. Both the lander and the rover are equipped with cameras. They were launched back in December. The entire mission hasn't been well publicized, even in China. These things are expensive and they are complicated and they take a lot of effort. You don't always necessarily want to be shouting about things um, that are that expensive and complicated um, that might not work. But it did work and is being heralded as a milestone. Unlike other missions, China's probe has landed on a part of the moon that has been unexplored. It's going to be surveying the geology and conducting biological experiments, and experts say it plays into China's greater ambitions to be a space superpower. China wants to position itself as a global leader, both politically and when it comes to scientific and technological advances. Joining the space race is part of meeting that goal. Well, they want to put humans on the moon, so they want to build a moon base. And that's that's what they're working towards, and they're collecting data to find out, is that going to be physically possible? And because this mission has so far been a success, experts say it's only going to encourage more competition to explore the still unseen corners of space. Briar Stewart, CBC News, London.